Hello, I'm Claire Smith and welcome to my channel. So today is part two of my perfume collection. If you have already seen part one, then great. But if you haven't, I will leave it linked down below. You don't have to watch part one before you watch part two. So if you've not seen me before, I'm Claire Smith and I make videos all about perfume, perfume science, perfume history, and just perfume in general. So if that kind of thing interests you, then please do consider subscribing and also please like this video if you do end up liking this video. So, Today I'm going to be showing you all the fragrances in my collection with brand names beginning with the letters K to Z. So I thought I'd just show you the fragrances that we're going to talk about today. So this is the, this is the little pile that we've got left after part one. So let's get on with this. So this fragrance is one from Kat Von D, um, as was. I think it's now called KVD Vegan Beauty, or has it changed again? Is it Kenzo Vegan Beauty? I'm not really sure. But this fragrance was from that time, and I didn't buy it deliberately because I don't support Kat Von D. But when she left the company, I bought the fragrance. So this fragrance is something that's regarded as a dupe for Midnight Poison. I, I really don't think it is. So but it does have a feel of Midnight Poison. So this one is called Sinner, and this is a boozy plum rose patchouli fragrance. And I guess that's where the Midnight Poison comparison comes in. I, I think this one is something that really does smell a little bit gothic, actually. And I think this is definitely one that I would choose to wear in autumn, winter rather than spring, summer. So that's KVD's Sinner. Next little group of fragrances are my Kayali fragrances. So I did an entire video about the history of the Kayali fragrance brand and about the founder of the fragrance brand. And I will leave that link down below in case you do want to watch it. But Kayali is a brand that I really underestimated before I tried some of their fragrances. And I'm really sad that I did. So just to go through this quickly, Vanilla 28 is that sort of caramelized brown sugar feel. It smells almost like you're taking a cake out of an oven. If you want to smell like, you know, baked goods, that's the fragrance to go for. Love Fest Burning Cherry is something that smells like Tom Ford's uh, Lost Cherry for about the first 5-10 seconds. Then it changes and goes in a slightly different direction. So there's raspberry in the fragrance and then there's also just a very sort of smoky, woody feel. In fact, Love Fest Burning Cherry smells a lot more like that other Tom Ford. Is it Cherry Smoke? That one in the dry down smells very similar. Um, also invite only, um, I think that's the one that people love to hate, isn't it? Invite only, but invite only is a tobacco cherry fragrance. And I feel like that's the, really the distant cousin of love fest burning cherry. But yeah, I really like that tobacco -y feel in, in invite only and invite only amber is probably, yeah, it might even be my favorite actually invite only amber. It's just a very different fragrance. Utopia uh, vanilla cocoa is as you wouldn't expect a white floral fragrance in the main it's a tropical floral kind of fragrance with a coconut and vanilla as the name does suggest and pink pepper is just the fun rosy one isn't it it's the fun rosy one with a little kick um and yeah i just really like all of these fragrances so those are my kayalis so this next fragrance is one from kenzo and it's called kenzo world so i think really Kenzo World Power was the one that got all the attention but actually I, I prefer Kenzo World. So Kenzo World to me is something that starts off with red berries and then it just gets overtaken very quickly by just a ton of ambroxan. This is more of a smooth glass-like ambroxan. It's very clear and it makes me think of crystals, it makes me think of being in a bath. It just has that really clean feel about it and it's something that I really like wearing to work and I just find it very relaxing. So that's Kenzo World. So this next fragrance is from Lalique. It's called Pearl de Lalique. This fragrance is a rose carbonated water fragrance to me. It smells definitely for something like something fizzy, something effervescent. But there's also patchouli in here and maybe even something fruity. It smells always fruity to me. It's very bright and very happy and uplifting, this one. This one gets compared to Midnight Poison and I, there is a passing similarity, but I would say that this one is just too bright and happy for Midnight Poison. And actually nowadays, I think I prefer Pearl de Lalique to Midnight Poison. So that's uh, Pearl de Lalique by Lalique. So this is Vervine by L'Occitane and this is basically just a, a lemon verbena fragrance. It's very simple, but it's very refreshing and just really lovely for the summer, Vervine by L'Occitane. And this is Latafa's Emir Al Oud Intense Oud, and this fragrance gets compared to By the Fireplace by Replica Fragrances a lot, and I really don't get it, because this one doesn't really have a smoky feel. 
It is just a caramelised, nutty vanilla fragrance to me, but it also has a little bit of leatheriness in the dry down. But yeah, this one is the only Lataffa that's survived my decluttering so far. I can't say that I really get on with a lot of Lataffa fragrances, but this one is somehow more acceptable to me. I think a lot of Lataffa fragrances can come off as just quite cheap smelling. Uh, I guess they are cheap, and that's probably why I think that, but... They, they just have something plasticky or screechy or there's something just not quite right about them. And once you smell it, you can't unsmell it, if you know what I mean. But this one is staying for the time being. So that's Emir Al Oud Intense Oud. This next fragrance was an absolute odyssey to find and is just so gorgeous. I, I'm so pleased I found an original bottle of Lolita Lempica by Lolita Lempica. This is the EDP. And this is a, a licorice anise fragrance, so it has a bit of a feel of a very gentle ouzo in the beginning. But then it, you get more of the cherry, it's kind of powdery, and it just has this beautiful enveloping violet as well. It's just really sweet and, and fairy-like. It's really striking for a, a fragrance at this price point, and I see why it's loved. So that's Lolita Lempica by Lolita Lempica. So this next fragrance is also one from Lolita Lempica and it's called El Lem a la Folie. So El Lem a la Folie is a banana -y smelling ylang ylang fragrance, but it has a really strong resinous feel as well. It has myrrh and that gives it a slightly medicinal twang to it. But this fragrance really, if I had to pick one out of my collection that gave me the strongest sunshine, yellowy, golden feel, it would be this one. This really smells very golden to me very yellow and it always just makes me think of being lost or marooned on a tropical island. It, ha it has something about it that makes me think of coconut even though I don't think coconut is listed in this fragrance. There's also I think vanilla in this fragrance and yeah it's just a really nice tropical summer one but really quite strong. So that's Lolita Lempica LM a la Folie. So this next one is by Madonna and it's called Truth or Dare and I think it's widely believed that this is one of the best celebrity fragrances that have ever been released. And actually when this was released, Robert Piguet was rumoured to be considering suing Madonna because of the similarity of this fragrance to his fragrance, Fracas. And actually I have smelt his fragrance from the nozzle. I haven't smelt it side by side with this one sprayed. But I do get the passing resemblance of the, his fragrance with this one. They are alike, but I guess, you know, they're both tuberose forward fragrances. So this is definitely a, a more sherbety tuberose to me. It's something that smells quite fizzy, um, but it also has just a creaminess to it in the dry down. And I think there's also vanilla in this fragrance. So, yeah, I really like this one and I'm glad to have it. But it's it's really hard to find now. So that's Madonna's Truth or Dare. So this next fragrance is a special one because I bought this just through my own curiosity, really, because I really wondered how it smelled because I'd seen it in my one of my favourite films and I'd seen it actually in Lost in Translation. If you're eagle eyed, you will see this on Charlotte's dressing table in her hotel room. And this is Marc Jacobs by Marc Jacobs. So I was curious to know what Charlotte would smell of. And actually, Charlotte smells of gardenia and a very green, watery smelling lily of the valley with a nice musky dry down. So yeah, um, just curiosity killed the cat really with this one. I quite like it. I don't wear it that often. Um, I will keep it in my collection just because I love that film, I think. But yeah, that's Marc Jacobs by Marc Jacobs, a bit of a throwback. So this next fragrance is one that was really my signature fragrance for a few years, and it's Lola by Marc Jacobs. So I think this one really wasn't that popular with most people. I think a lot of people were put off by the opening of it um, because it's a lot of grapefruit at the beginning. So after the grapefruit, you get a, a peppery feeling, sparkly rose. And the rose here smells like Lush's Rose Jam. I, I think these fragrances are quite comparable. But this one is just a little bit darker, a little bit deeper. Um, just something a little bit less zingy than Lush Rose Jam. I, I still really love Lola. Every time I wear it, I smile. It, it's just got something about it that was just an instant love for me. And before I was really truly into fragrance, this is the one that stood out for me. So that's Lola by Marc Jacobs. So this next one is a flanker of Daisy. And this is Daisy Days. So this was a limited edition a few years back, maybe 2019, I think. 
And this fragrance is very much along the lines of Daisy. So it has that core Daisy DNA, which you get in the middle and the end of the fragrance. But to begin with, it's something between mandarin and apricot. It's sort of something soft and fruity, but I'm not quite sure exactly which fruit. It's quite indistinct. Yeah, as it dries down, it has a sort of slight laundry muskiness about it. And I think that's what I don't particularly enjoy about it. But I really do like the opening and I like the fact that it is so close to Daisy itself. It is a true flanker. So that's Daisy Days by Marc Jacobs. So these two fragrances are now incredibly rare because Marc Jacobs has discontinued Decadence, which is, is criminal. So Marc Jacobs Decadence is a green, fruity, woody vanilla, and it's very, very long lasting. It also has saffron. So there's sort of some kind of kick in there, but it's the woodiness of this fragrance. And I guess it's the vetiver that makes it a little bit woody. But yeah, it's just very distinctive, very long lasting. And I think it was a lot of people's favourites, really, this fragrance. It, it's definitely sort of something that, that swings towards something like Aura by, by Mugla or something that smells a little bit like Floral Street's Wild Vanilla Orchid. Those two fragrances are also along the same lines as Decadence. Marc Jacobs' Osa Decadent is a flanker of Decadence and actually it's one that I think I prefer to Decadence, dare I say it. This one is a little bit ozonic. It feels like something that's after the rain almost. It's got black currant and I think that's also something I really like. It's a little bit green smelling, it's got an ivy note, it's definitely something that does smell exactly like ivy on a wall and it's just got a really strong muskiness in the dry down as well. Just a really lovely fragrance for spring summer and a lot more wearable than decadence. Decadence is something that you really can't escape. If you spray decadence, it's going to last for days, whereas Oso Decadent is a little bit more gentle and a little bit easier to wear. So those two are from Marc Jacobs. So this fragrance is one from, by Mercedes-Benz, and I never, ever thought that I would own a fragrance by a car company. I find that really weird. So this fragrance, I think, was marketed towards men, but it's basically a, a vanilla fragrance. It's a very... It's a very warm and rich and enveloping resinous vanilla fragrance. But this fragrance is compared to Galan Spiritueur's Double Veni. And having never smelt that fragrance, I can't really compare them. I, from smelling it myself, I can't really say that I imagine that's how the Galan smells. But um, yeah, I guess it's like anything, isn't it, where people compare things. They're generally not that similar. But that's what people say. This fragrance to me just makes me think of cookies baking in an oven. It, it just smells like something caramelising, something vanilla-y and, and something warm and inviting and something you want to eat. Very gourmand, this one. So that's Mercedes-Benz Club Black. This next fragrance is one, again, that I won in the giveaway. And I would say this is my favourite out of the three. So this is Basilica by Milano Fragranzi. And the thing I really like about this is that it's a herbal smelling... Uh, incense fragrance but also it has this sort of milky milky lactonic almost metallic feel but also it has leather it's just such a contrast this fragrance and it really evolves as well and I just really like all the different facets of it it's a really interesting fragrance I guess it's not for everyone I can't see that it's something that is going to make you smell pretty or or, you know, anything like that. It's not it's not a traditional kind of, you know, grab this to go out kind of fragrance. But it's just such an interesting one. And it just really intrigues me. And I've really enjoyed having this little bottle of it. Um, it's really been the favourite of the three. So that's Basilica by Milano Fragranzi. So this one was a Naughty Blind Buy in TK Maxx. And this one's found at Dusk by Miller Harris. And I would say this is in my top fragrances of last year. This is one that I really wore a lot and really enjoyed and this is a black currant fragrance in the main but it also has uh, tomato leaves it also has mint and I think that's really why it makes me think of of my childhood garden it makes me think of being back in time and it being the summer holidays and you have being in the garden with before a rainstorm that's that's the feeling I get from this fragrance it's just such a natural smelling black currant fragrance perfect for the summer so that's Miller Harris found at dusk this next one is a little 10 mil fragrance from Miller Harris. It's called Etui Noir. So this is a leather incense, but also iris fragrance. It's a bit powdery. 
and I would say this is probably one of my favourite leather fragrances, maybe even my favourite leather fragrance, certainly of the ones in my collection, but maybe even of the ones that I've ever tried. Um, I just find this one really addictive and I'm, I'm, I'm running through my 10 mil very quickly. I really enjoyed wearing it last winter and I think I will enjoy it again this winter. So that's Etui Noir. So finally from Miller Harris is Violet Ida and actually this fragrance doesn't contain Vi Violet. It's nothing to do with Violet. It's based on the character Violet Ida. So this fragrance actually opens with carrot seed and carrot seed can be off-putting to a lot of people but I think this is one that you need to wait for the dry down with. So this actually is, is quite a powdery fragrance. It's got iris again. It's very makeup-y smelling to me. It smells almost like the inside of a handbag, like dropped vintage makeup in a vintage handbag it also smells a little bit like you're in a, an art class you're in a you're in a clay modeling lesson almost it's got that kind of smell about it but really in the dry down it's all about the soft sweet vanilla it's a vanilla forward fragrance really creamy and and really powdery so that's Violet Ida by Miller Harris so this next fragrance is one from Montel, and this is one I was gifted by Gabby, the fragrantician. So thank you so much, Gabby. So when I when I first tried this, I was a little bit shocked. I'd never tried a Montel fragrance before. And Montel have a certain DNA about them. They're very sweet. They have a sort of a slightly grainy feel to them to me. And there's also a very distinctive muskiness about them that seems different to every other fragrance brand that I've tried. This one is, is a vanilla rose musk, really, in the main, but with a slight oudiness and also the coffee. So the coffee is something I didn't smell until I'd worn this a few times. But now I get the coffee quite quite strongly, actually. I, I like this now, but yeah, it took me a few wears to, to get into this. So that's Montal's Intense Cafe. So this fragrance is my only remaining Moschino fragrance and the others I've either used up or decluttered. And this is the only one left because it, I think it's just one I really like, but it, it's very much a summer fragrance for me. So this is a bitter citrus and tea fragrance with a woody, musky dry down. I think Machina are a brand that kind of do themselves an injustice with their, with their bottle design sometimes. This is a really nice fragrance in a really horrible bottle. So that's Moschino Funny. So next we're on to the Moogler fragrances and this is my little collection of angels. So I have two of the original angels. I have Eau Crozier 2020, I have Angel Nova and I have the very rare Eau de Star and also Angel Muse. So the original angel, I have the vintage version. I don't have the current version because I'm not so keen on the current version. And that's why I have two partial bottles because anytime I see it, I grab it. And Angel really, I don't think it needs describing because I think most people have probably smelt it by now, but it's a chocolatey patchouli fragrance really in the dry down. But it's quite a rough ride in the beginning. I guess it's one that I only really wear in the winter because it can be quite cloying in the summer. Eau Crozier 2020 was one that I just fell in love with. I just think that it's, I mean, it's supposed to be fig, but to me it smells like pineapple or even mango depending upon my mood. It's just a really fruity, gorgeous, long lasting fragrance, really sweet and just has something just really creamy and beautiful about it. Angel Nova is just a really happy one. It's very fizzy, it's very bright and it's got loads of fruit, fruitiness about it. Again, I just really love the, the fruits in it. It's raspberry and lychee, but yeah, very, very synthetic still, very, very pink smelling, very, very fun. Eau de Star is one that I don't reach for very often and I was gifted that one by Annie from Annie Sense. Thank you to Annie Sense. So she, I think, just didn't get on with it. So it's very much like an upside down angel in that you get the patchouli first and then later on you get a watermelon note. So it's kind of kind of like a, a, an angel for the summer, really. Angel Muse is one that I bought more recently because I know Angel Muse is being discontinued, sadly, and Whilst I didn't love Angel Muse EDP, it sounds really odd, but I couldn't imagine not being able to go into a store and smell it. So Angel Muse is based again around a chocolatey patchouli, but it also has a hazelnut note. So the hazelnut is, is like a chocolate, chocolate hazelnut spread, almost like a Nutella kind of fragrance. But Angel Muse is incredibly strong. It's one that's really so overwhelming. So I'm going to wait until winter to get to know it a little bit more on my skin. 
So I can't say that I'm overly familiar with Angel Muse as yet. But yeah, I just bought a little 15 mil because I knew it was being discontinued. So this is my Alien collection and I have Alien Mirage. Then I have a vintage Alien version and a more modern Alien version. And then I have Alien Essence Absolute on the right. So Mirage is a non-jasmine Alien flanker and it's something that's quite mineral smelling. And it definitely has a strong muskiness in, in the dry down. And the musk is quite a dense one. It's not really, you know, that sort of enveloping smoky musk, that, that kind of dark musk. It's not that at all. It's more of a laundry musk in the dry down. But it does have a slight floral feel about it as well. It's quite hard to describe, but it's something that does have something almost sea-like about it, but it's not really... It's not really marine. It's not really aquatic. It just has that, that sort of mineralic facet to it. The Vintage Alien and the Modern Alien I've reviewed in a comparison video. So if you are interested in the comparison, I will link that video down below. I much prefer the Vintage Alien. It's got a, a more sort of menthol interesting opening and it just has a nicer dry down. Alien Essence Absolute is one that I was searching for for a very long time and I just have a bottle with not very much left but actually that was quite affordable to buy that so I'm just glad to have it in my collection. So Alien Essence Absolute if you haven't tried it is a, um, a myrrh and vanilla version of the normal Alien. It's just deeper, sweeter and yeah it's just got something about it that has meant that it's become a bit of a cult fragrance really hasn't it. So that's uh, my Alien collection. And my final one from Moogler is Aura. So Aura is one that was, I think was released in 2017. And it's a green vanilla fragrance in the main, but it does have some rhubarb, it has some ylang ylang. So it makes me think of, of tropical forests, actually. A wet tropical forest is really a great description for this fragrance. It's, there's something lush about it. And, you know, the advertising for Aura with the woman in the forest is, is really... A very good representation of the fragrance. So sad times, Aura has now been discontinued as well. Um, I think L'Oreal are really decimating the original Thierry Mugler fragrances. There's really not much left and the ones that are left have been entirely reformulated. So that's Aura by Mugler. So now we're on to my Narciso Rodriguez fragrances and I only have two. So I have a Narciso Ombre which is the tropical version of this fragrance line. And I also have Narciso Poudre, which is the powdery version of this fragrance line. So I think out of the two, I prefer the Poudre, but I think the Poudre is discontinued now. So Ombre is the tropical florals, um, but on that backbone of the, of the white flowers and the powdery, but slightly creamy musk. Narciso Poudre is, is all about the powderiness. So the powderiness is amped up but it also has rose in there and it's a soft pink rose. It's a very huggy kind of jumpery fragrance to me. Something that really makes you think of, of someone, someone like your mum basically, I think is, is Narcissa Poudre. So yep, just those two from Narcissa Rodriguez. Next we have the Nina Ricci Lextas line. So I have a uh, Chant Lextas, which is the one on the left. And I also have Ex Lextas Rose Absolute. So these are both flankers of the original Lextas fragrance and I think both of these are Francis Cook de Jam fragrances if I'm not mistaken so Chant d'Extase is probably my favourite and it's a marine smelling caramel fragrance. L'Extase Rose Absolue is something that smells like a peppery a peppery tithe rose it's a very middle eastern kind of smelling rose to me and yeah I, I'm really pleased to have both of these I feel, really feel like I got the bottle sizes the wrong way around with these two. I should have got a big bottle of Chant d'Extase and a smaller bottle of, of the L'Extase Rose Absolue because I feel like Chant d'Extase is the one that I'm going to finish. So this next fragrance is one from Nina Ricci again and this one's called Ricci Ricci and this again I think is now discontinued. So this one is a rose and rhubarb fragrance and rhubarb is something that I can sometimes find a bit sour and a bit sharp. But in this fragrance, it's really tempered by a beautiful rose syrup. And there's also quite a boozy feel to this fragrance as well. It really smells like there could be a, like a sherry or something in this fragrance. So that's Nina Ricci, Ricci Ricci. So this is not all perfumery fragrance that was given by Yulia. Thank you so much, Yulia. So um, Yulia 
absolutely loves oil perfumery and they do impressions of different fragrances. So this particular one is Chanel Beige, which is a fragrance I've smelt once in a store. So I'm not that familiar with it, but I would say that from the opening spray, this smelt very similar. As it dried down, they diverged a little bit, but I guess with oil perfumery, then you get all the notes at once, don't you? It's not like when you spray a fragrance, you, you get the the it, the evolution of the fragrance. You don't get that with oil perfumery, you get it all at once. So this one is basically a very creamy, tropical floral, almost like a something like a body cream kind of fragrance. Um, it always makes me think of Prada La Femme, but I actually think this fragrance is, is much nicer than Prada La Femme. It's smoother. It also smells just like you're smelling an actual flower, whereas Prada La Femme always smells a little bit synthetic to me. This this oil perfumery really smells very natural to me. So that's the impression of Chanel Beige by Oil Perfumery. This one is my only Paca Rabanne fragrance, and this is Ultraviolet. So Ultraviolet is clearly a violet fragrance but this one has quite a strong evolution so it starts off a little bit spicy dusty almost with coriander but then as it dries down it becomes a sweeter just very very violet forward fragrance really in the main and this one's just really fun and I think really I don't like Paco Rabanne fragrances in the main and this one really surprised me by how much I enjoy it so that's Paco Rabanne's Ultraviolet so this strange looking bottle is actually Pharrell Williams' Girl. This is a celebrity fragrance and it was a collaboration with Comme des Garçons, which I think is what caused all the hype around this fragrance. I think actually this is probably one of the best celebrity fragrances that I've tried. It's very different and it's a unisex marketed celebrity fragrance as well. So this is really a powdery woody fragrance, but with a peppery violet feeling as well the violet is really probably the most prominent thing in this fragrance I think this is widely compared to Dior Fahrenheit I've sniffed that and I get the passing resemblance but I don't think they're incredibly similar I just really like this one it's really long lasting um I think the, the whole bottle 100 ml was something like 12 pounds I think this is a really, really good bargain of a fragrance if you want something different and if you want something a little bit edgy. So that's a Pharrell Williams Girl. So these are my three reminiscence fragrances and they all come from the Les Notes Gourmand line, which I got a bit obsessed with last year. So the first one I bought was the green one, which is Heliotrope. And actually that one is probably the sweetest and probably the most likeable if you like marzipan because that basically is the dry down of the fragrance marzipan the middle one drage is probably the lightest and probably the prettiest drage is the one that smells of orange blossom and of powdery almonds so drage literally means sugared almonds so yeah it smells a bit like sugared almonds the one on the right the pink one is called gimov and Gimov literally means marshmallow. So this one opens with a bit of a herbal feel and it's also got a bit of a citrus feel. But as this dries down, it turns into an orange blossom tinged marshmallow fragrance. The marshmallow is sort of a powdery, vanillary feel kind of marshmallow. They're, all three of them are absolutely gorgeous. If you really like gourmand, powdery fragrances, this is a line really to check out. So yeah, overall, I, I would recommend trying these. I think, you know, for the for the price they normally are, which is around 30 to £40, pounds, I think they're a bargain. Even if they're a little bit more than that, I still think they're worth checking out. And I would base your choice based on whether you like marzipan, whether you like marshmallows, or whether you like almonds. So yeah, that's the Les Notes Gourmand line from a Renaissance. This is Salvatore Ferragamo Signorina Rebelle, and this fragrance is very nearly finished. This is a little 10 ml travel spray that I take to work quite often in my handbag to refresh my fragrance at lunchtime. This fragrance is quite a tropical floral fragrance, quite good for the summer, but it also has coconut. It has coconut in the dry down, and the coconut here is something between something creamy and something watery. It's sort of bang in the middle, really. Overall, just a very sweet fragrance, a little bit synthetic, but just a nice one for the summer and really easy to wear. So that's Signorina Ribelle by Salvatore Ferragamo.
So next we have a couple of more celebrity fragrances and these two are by Sarah Jessica Parker. So the one on the left is called Covet Pure Bloom and Covet Pure Bloom smells to me like a fruity, a fruity tuberose with a background of coconut water. The, the coconut definitely isn't creamy here, it's more watery. I think the fragrance here actually smells very much like the colour of the bottle. It smells light purple. I don't know what it is about it that makes it smell like purple, but there's, there's something to me that just makes me think of that colour with this fragrance. I really like Covert Pure Bloom, but it does make me think a little bit of shampoo. It is along those lines. Stash by SJP is a very different fragrance. So Stash is an incredibly woody fragrance. And really the dry down is, is sandalwood. The dry down is, is a sandalwood, which in the far dry down can even smell like uh, like a roasted coconut almost. The opening is all about the grapefruit, but yeah, it's, it's a woody one overall. And I think it's actually unisex marketed as well. I think the reason Stash stands out from Sergis Parker is because after Lovely, you really wouldn't expect that kind of fragrance from her. But yeah, it, it's widely regarded as a classic, isn't it, Stash? So... That's my little SJP collection. This next fragrance is one from the Body Shop and I sought out a vintage bottle of Vanilla Eau de Toilette because the Body Shop have now reformulated all of their classic fragrances because they've gone vegan, which means that most of them have entirely changed how they smell, which, you know, whilst I support being vegan, being cruelty-free, etc., if you've got an original fragrance, I feel like you should have the original version available to people who want that original version. I find reformulations difficult because how can you call something the same thing and market it as the same thing when it isn't the same thing? So this is just a very enveloping creamy vanilla. Um, it's definitely more of a creamy vanilla rather than a resin vanilla. It is quite light and I like wearing this one to bed and I sometimes wear it to work as well. Just very easy going, nothing complicated and yeah, sad it's gone. So that's the, the Body Shop Vanilla Eau de Toilette. This next fragrance was one from Theodorus Calatinis and this one's called Alluring Fig and was given to me by Paola Bianca. So thank you very much, Paola. So this one I absolutely love. It's a, it's a green leafy fig fragrance literally smells like the fig plant not the fig uh, fruit but it also has just a really nice creamy vanilla um, the vanilla here is quite green because of the mixing with the fig note I think and with the fig tree note but yeah it's just a very simple one but just really nicely and well done and I find it absolutely perfect for sort of spring summer early summer when it's not too hot so that's Alluring Fig by Theodorus Calatinus. So this is my collection of the Tom Ford Orchid line. I have Black Orchid, I have Velvet Orchid, and I also have Orchid Soleil. Orchid Soleil is sadly discontinued, but the other two are still available. So Black Orchid, I think a lot of people hate this one, don't they? But I actually really love Black Orchid. I do get that it's got a kind of a mushroomy, earthy feel to it. But on me, it's just really sweet in the dry down and, and sweet and musky. And I just think it's gorgeous. Orchid Soleil is one that I really love as well. Orchid Soleil makes me think of hot summers and makes me think of, of grain in sheds. It just has that sort of scent memory for me of childhood. It makes me think of towels in storage and, and summer holidays. It just has, has something that takes me somewhere. Velvet Orchid is, is a little bit different. Velvet Orchid is, is sweeter, it's honeyed, it's rum. And there's also a lot of florals in there that just make it quite a different fragrance to the other two. Velvet Orchid smells to me very strongly of bulb flowers. Um, and yeah, I've been wearing Velvet Orchid quite a lot this year because I bought that one for my birthday. I already had the other two. So yeah, getting to know Velvet Orchid, but still love the other two very, very much. So that's my Orchid range from Tom Ford. So this is Tom Ford Noir Pour Femme, and this is my last Tom Ford fragrance. I think this just has the general noir DNA of the coffee, the cardamom, and just that, that vanilla in the citrusy entrance. It's just a very distinctive DNA. I think this one, just the beauty is the dry down. The opening is a little bit wild, but once it dries down, 
you just smell delicious and I absolutely love the wearing this one in cold weather it has to be super super cold to get me to to put this one on because it can be quite cloying if you wear it in hot weather but yeah in the cool absolutely gorgeous so that's Tom Ford Noir Pour Femme so this fragrance is my last Versace fragrance. I've used up a few Versace fragrances and I've also decluttered Versace Yellow Diamond Intense. This one I really do like, but I can't say it's the most natural smelling fragrance in the world. So this is a fig fragrance, I think technically, because this is the EDT, but to me it still smells like coconut. This one to me also has quite peppery opening and it also smells quite soapy and quite clean almost. It definitely has a coolness to it, it has a spiciness maybe from the pepper, but in the dry down it's all about that sort of milky coconut and the sandalwood. Um, I really like this one, I think it's an all year round fragrance, it's something that smells amazing in the summer and I think it really is one that could be a signature fragrance. It's something that really lasts and really projects, considering it's an EDT, it's a really long lasting fragrance, that's for such a crystal noir EDT. Next I have these two uh, YSL fragrances, so from the Black Opium line, so I have the original Black Opium which used to be my signature fragrance until about 2017 and then I also have the Black Opium Intense, so Black Opium I think probably everybody knows how it smells, so it's a really a vanilla coffee fragrance with some white florals and some patchouli and Black Opium Intense is really not that similar to Black Opium. To me, Black Opium Intense really smells more like a custody vanilla in the dry down. And it's not that intense. It's quite odd. I think the, the newer flankers that have names that I forget, is it Extreme? And there's also another one. I think they are probably what I imagined Intense to be, which is not what this fragrance is. So yeah, those are my two YSLs, uh, Black Opium and Black Opium Intense. So we're on to Z now, and this is Zadig and Voltaire's This Is Hers. So this fragrance was having a moment when I started my YouTube channel, and it's one of the first fragrances that I blind bought. And I remember my shock at trying this, because everybody reviews this and just talks about how it's a creamy sandalwood fragrance, but no one really mentions the really peppery, really strong opening. And really that's what hits you in the face when you first try this. To me, this is not the most natural smelling fragrance in the world, and I don't wear it that often, but I still do really love it. I feel like this is one of my most huggable fragrances. This is one of those really creamy, really milky, really comforting fragrances that is really great in snuggle weather. It's one for when it's cold outside and you're on a sofa in January or December. It's just a very enveloping and gorgeous one, really long lasting, really projects. I can see why it was popular. So that's Zadig and Voltaire. This is her. And the final fragrance is actually one from Zara. So this is called Exotic Mimosa. So this is my only Zara fragrance. And this one is, is yeah, basically a powdery, but sort of honeyed mimosa. This really isn't exotic at all. It just smells more like you're in a meadow. So this is quite powdery, quite yellow smelling, quite sweet, but also quite creamy almost. Just a really simple one and yeah, an easy reach. That's Exotic Mimosa by Zara. So that's the end of part two. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed it, then please press the like button and please also consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And if you haven't already seen part one, I will leave it linked down below so you can go and check it out at your leisure. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye.